week and some inmates of the Gambaga Alleged Witches Camp continue to administer medications even after they have completed an entire dosage prescribed by doctors. This is because they are in, unable to service uh, hospital bills. Zubeda Ismail reports from the Northern Region. Basic health care is the right of every Ghanaian citizen. Thus, human right is duly enshrined in the 1992 Constitution. It means, irrespective of gender, physical stature, mental stability, and age, quality health care must be provided to you when the need arises. However, inmates at the Gambaga alleged witches camp, mostly the aged, have a difficulty accessing health care. Inmates at the camp, who have been alleged to be witches, with many banished from their communities, feel safe here. Daily basis, we go to the hospital. Sometimes I can go six, five times. Oh. Yeah. Anybody who is sick here is spread fast because of their numbers. Mm -hmm. Something like cholera. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It is something that can easily spread. Ghana, in 2003, through an act of parliament, introduced the National Health Insurance Scheme. The amended Act 852 was subsequently implemented in 2004 to provide financial access to quality health care. We have registered them with the NHS. They are all cut bearers. Anybody who is here is a cut bearer. We don't joke about it. But the fact is even that sometimes the Senate carrying the NHS and the only thing they will do is to write, go and buy drugs. And, and they, the money? They come back here. Ideally, inmates should not have difficulty accessing health care services. But that is not the case. The situation gets tougher when their cards expire. Our difficulty now is even not sending them there. Mm -hmm. The difficulty is they will write a note, go and buy drugs. Where is the money? That is what is killing us now. Pakrugu Bukhari, a native of Mamprugu, narrates her ordeal after she reported to the hospital with some pain in her eyes about a month ago. Her prescription had three medicines, but she received two out of the three. The third medicine, an eye drop, was not supplied. According to her, though she had the health insurance, she is a registered member of the National Health Insurance. She was only given this, and with the eye drop, they told her that um, there were 25 Ghana cities, and she had to pay. At that instant, she didn't have money. And so she didn't buy it. She came back home, raised money through this business. If symptoms persist for three days, consult your doctor. A popular caution by doctors means nothing to Pakrugu. Though she has been vilified a number of times while seeking medical care, that did not deter her. Her refusal to visit the hospital for a review is not because of the vilification. <laughs> She intimates she is unable to go for review before she goes to see the doctor at the consulting room. She's also demanded to pay 25 cities, where she does not have that money. And that is the reason why she's not been able to go back and she's opted to keep taking these two medicines and keep putting this into the eye, though she doesn't seem to see any improvement. Her sight is steadily failing, but she says her intuitiveness is enough. I just inquired from her how she's able to identify between the diclofenac and the paracetamol. It's interesting, she's still able to do that just by failing them so the sizes are what she, is, she uses to identify these medicines. Once she fills this and she sees that they are the smaller ones, she knows these, this is uh, diclofenac and then she knows this is paracetamol. Pakurugu Bukhari and the inmates meet doctors only when civil society organizations visit with doctors. 2014, we got one and then, uh, yeah. We got another one recently, but that was last year. It's not often and often. Apart from these two, I can remember. We don't. But normally it will come 
when someone wants to support us today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The caretaker, Samson Lar, recounts some moments between inmates and health workers during hospital visits. We send them to the hospital and sometimes they just look at them and they think like, immediately they get to know that she's a witch. I can remember one of them I had to speak to the doctor because what came out of his mouth, I was very disappointed. What came out of the doctor's mouth? was treating her and I don't know whether someone prompted the person that that was the women I was taking care of and he said, oh, they kill people and they also fear death. And he said it in the language that the woman could even understand. So I was like, what is going on? Someone is sick. They have just accused the patient. The patient is not well. How do you say this? That's uh -huh. from a doctor, a learned yes. person. Yes, Ellen. Oh, I can tell you that those who call themselves learned persons are even those who fear them more. Inmates are not vilified only when they visit the hospital by themselves. As residents are unable to identify them but their ages do not allow them to walk from the camp to the hospital i think the youngest person here is around 60 years the youngest the youngest even not 60 55 yeah something okay. like that many of them are old many many of them are old about i tell you 90 percent most inmates have health conditions including mental disorders routine checks for such inmates would help improve their health. We have, there are about three who are even having this mental uh, illness. Uh, I know many of them are also this blood pressure, thing, hypertension, sicknesses. What we do is that, that's why I was referring to monthly hospital we attend. We have identified all of them and put them into groups. Those with high blood pressure, we kept them into. So we send them monthly to pick their drugs. We leave the drugs with them. For instance, the mental uh, people, we have given the drugs to Mangazia. Okay. Every morning, whether you like it or not, you must go and greet the Mangazia. That is our tradition here, okay. as soon as you are here. So what we do is that every morning when they go there to greet her, she will give it to them. Samson says the situation would have been less challenging if inmates were beneficiaries of the Livelihood Empowerment Against Poverty program, which would have absorbed the renewal fees. Another good thing we were thinking was the proper policies like the LIP program. Mm -hmm. We were thinking that all of them should have been registered. How many of them are registered? Oh, there are just only about 29 or 30 people who are registered. Out, and of, the... out of the 78. The East Mampusi Municipal Chief Executive, Abdul Nasser Danladi, has meanwhile assured registration process of emails will commence soon. I was thinking that the first quarter they will allow us to continue, but I don't know if it will be the problem. So now that you, you inform me, I will let the social welfare officer take care of that. Until then, caretakers have to use their meagre salary to pay hospital bills of inmates. Zubaida Ismail, TV3 News, Gambaga.